What's that, Kobe? I have to make a harness for the magnetometer before I close out the tail skins. Okay, give me 10. Happy October Fest, Bill. Okay, just another short day and a half home from airline training. So I thought I'd update you on the little progress that I've had. I've got the fuselage, belly skin, tail cone up on the table. And you can see I've got the stringers laid out and I've been kind of busy hacks on them, measuring twice, hopefully cutting once on all these guys because different lengths and then, but what I need to do now is just prep all these holes. And there's about a bazillion and one holes to prep. So what I figured on the inside edge of these stringers, it's um, a little tight for a typical deburr tool. So what I started doing is I took a slightly oversized um, oh, magnets. <laughs> well, let me talk about the magnets. So the magnets are to verify if these were steel or not. So these are some nut plates that go on these um, inspection tabs. They're outside getting primered because those nut plates are steel. You follow me? Okay, next is prepping the stringers. And all, you see how all these burrs inside here, I mean, every single hole of all these stringers and longrons needs to be deburred. And on the inside edge, it's just a little bit tight because of that flange uh, for the deburr tool. So take it just slightly oversized, in this case it's a 3 16 drill bit, and then wrap it with tape, you know, masking tape or duct tape or whatnot to increase the radius as well as increase the friction on your fingers so that you can easily just deburr all these holes like that rather than going through with, with sandpaper. So that's my tech. Neek. All right, quick and dirty. That's about all I'm gonna get done this trip home. But the good news is I've only gotta go back to airline training for about three days, finish off my procedures validation in a kind of quasi simulator, just get my flows and call outs done. And then back here for five days. So I thought initially, ooh, I'm maybe gonna attach the tail cone to the cage, but that's pipe dream, dude. I gotta attach the bulkheads. And then we've got to put the skins on the side of the fuselage, kind of build that whole thing. Um, and then a ton of test fitting and getting the angles just right on the, on the cage. So that's probably gonna be a couple weeks away, but hopefully it'll be contained in this video. Okay, I've got the tedious task of putting the nut plates on and kind of click out in place and realized that the stringer that needs to overlap this inspection doubler um, needs a whole match drilled. So I flipped the whole thing over, supported it, and I'm just gonna match drill 30. I think that, is that it? Nope, that one and that one that one and that one i'm back after a couple days in seattle um i have got a good five day break so i am going to try to charge on this so i've got the bottom skin stringers longerons inspection tab doublers all mocked up and it's time to flip it i say you'll flip you he'll what flip you flip you for real onto some sawhorses to rivet it but I will note a couple things. You gotta be very careful not to um, rivet a couple areas, station three to four support angle. But then also, this was a little bit confusing and I saw this in a couple other people's videos uh, that they were confused, is the dis the, this is a fairly critical distance right here and all it says in the directions is a quarter inch from the hole. Now. A quarter inch from the edge of the hole, a quarter inch from the middle of the hole. It's a quarter inch from the middle of the hole right there. Because if you, if you leave too much there, it's going to come into contact with uh, other things on the cage. So make that pretty as close as you can, and I think, I think we should be okay. So um, if not, no big deal. You're not riveting this area. You could just pop out the Clecos and file it down as necessary. So not a huge deal, but just pay attention to that.
this could be a little bit confusing. This is APQ43 is here through here. So I could see you waiting on those and then starting there back, but actually the instructions say don't rivet anything between stations three and four yet. So go ahead and do whatever you gotta do to prevent yourself from doing that, but it's gonna be 42s this way, 43s that way. Oh, before I get riveting, something else I would point out. So you notice there's more Clicos here than there were before. What maybe I didn't show was that I removed all the Clicos from the underneath side. So. The Clicos going into each stringer kind of interfere with the side of the, of the stringer and just don't sit quite right. So I opted to just put all the Clicos on the bottom of the skin, remove all the ones from the top of the skin. Again, this is upside down, but I thought I'd point that out. We interrupt this time lapse to be frustrated at my riveter. It keeps jamming. I keep cleaning it. It is the cleanest riveter around. I'm suspecting that the lubricant that I'm using is a little bit too thick. And so the mandrels are kind of getting stuck inside. So my fault, I'll try to find a better, more viscous or less viscous, whatever, um, more flowy <laughs> uh, lubricant to have this jam left often, but keep it clean. It is clean. I will keep it clean. This is the lubricant I've been using. Um, Air Tool Oil. Maybe that's too thick, I don't know. But I'm not gonna lubricate it this time, because I think, you know, let's just try that to see if that helps. Maybe I'm over, over lubricating it. Back to riveting. Okay, stringers are done, now to the laundry rounds. That's done. Now it's time to put on the bulkheads. Before I install the bulkheads, I'm just kind of taking the bottom flanges, eyeballing them down, and if any of them need just a hair of a tweak, tweaking them to ensure that they all lay flat on the belly skin. Speaking of laying flat on the belly skin, I'm just kind of running my finger, making sure there's no high points or sharp edges, because that will absolutely induce pressure points and cracks. Now the bulkhead's on, it's time to start messing with the side skins. The way they ship is they're two identical parts. And so you're essentially gonna have to flip one over to work on the inside of the skin. So just pick one, flip it over. But before you do, you may wanna take some MEK, protect yourself up, wear some gloves, and take off the ink. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Then we're gonna flip it over, and then we're gonna start getting to trimming some more stringers to get the sides put on. And then we're gonna put one side on upside down, bulkheads face it down on the sawhorses. Then we're gonna flip it right side up on the table and do the other skin. This is nasty stuff. Works well though.
Longerons. I've also cut, deburred, degreased, cleaned, and primed the Longerons. So let's get them installed on these skins and on the fuselage. Table. Happy Oktoberfest, Bill. <laughs> okay, we've got both skins on, bulkheads riveted, bottom lingeron riveted. We're saving the top lingeron for the top skin. And now, working on the magnetometer mount. Here's the magnetometer. And one thing I found is if you plico from the bottom, it allows the head of the rivet gun to get that rivet. The one thing that they don't include in all of this is number six stainless steel machine screws. So it'd be handy to be able to mount that. But now I gotta go back to Home Depot. Andrea is working on um, match drilling the station 10 to station 11 closeout. A couple of the flanges are not pre drilled. Yeah. Template. Yep. Oh, nice. The template right there. How'd you get that? Um, I just put it on top of the piece and then I lined it all up and made a. Oh. Drew, the, tape drew, the, drew the edge around here so it's exactly where it needs to be. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna just transfer drill that way. Okay, so we size these to 40, and we'll upsize them later. We'll take any kind of slop out of it, and then I think what we'll do is so this is not installed this way. This goes underneath the plate, but we'll click on this so it's all sized correctly, and then we can just match drill down that way. And then upsize to finish. That's a good plan. All right, for reference, this is station seven. This is station six back here. Forward is that way. They say to mount it on the right side right here. They don't have those holes, nor are they in the bulkhead right there. This is just a fabrication hole right there. So I'm thinking I'll just kind of eyeball it. Looks crooked, but it's actually straight reference the air flow of the aircraft or the flying of the aircraft. Um, I think what I'll do is just start by maybe match drilling two holes maybe in the middle and pleat going those and then that'll hold it in place while I then match drill, not match drill, but just drill one, two, and three right there. sizing them from 40 to final size. And here, we've final sized the holes in there. So we're gonna take everything apart, deeper it, as always. Moving on to the sawhorses again, because we need to rivet from the other side.
Done. Just found this, didn't realize they supplied you with the cable for the harness to go back to the trim motor for the elevator trim. planning on getting done, thanks to Andrea. She's a little bit camera shy, so I didn't um, feature her too much, her face at least too much in the videos, but thanks a lot to her for all her help, man. She made super quick work out of match drilling that station 10, 11 closeout. I was kind of intimidated, but no problem for her. She's a jeweler, welder. She's got amazing technical skills. So I'm gonna leave this episode here. Thanks a lot for watching. I think I'm just gonna shorten the episodes a little bit because they become a bear to edit. And I am, I haven't even edited the part two of the wings video. Back to Seattle tomorrow and then a bunch more progress here this fall. I just wanna say again, as always, thanks for watching. I sure appreciate you being here. Until next time, you're cleared to rent.